now we are going to talk about the pneumonia so pneumonia is uh, not as such a very important question from ex uh, university exam point of view but yes uh, it uh, is caused by some of the important organisms which may be asked in the mcqs so we will be reading uh, about this pneumonia in very short uh, for that you have to remember the clinical scenarios because they may be asked in the long questions in the university exams uh, based on the clinical scenarios uh, but the chances are very rare as i have already mentioned so uh, let's start the pneumonia by looking at the clinical scenarios which will be uh, indicating towards the uh, pneumonia in the university exams if we get a question over the pneumonia okay so the clinical scenario includes the fever chest pain dyspnea tachypnea cough may be present or may be absent as well plus the x-ray findings may be mentioned in the questions because the x-ray findings are the only findings which uh, will help you whether they are the uh, lower pneumonia or the interstitial pneumonia they are the two varieties of the pneumonia that can be differentiated with uh, mostly by the x-rays finding only okay that helps us in differentiating between them two and why is that differentiation important that is important because these two types of pneumonia are caused by two different uh, sets of bacteria okay by different organisms the lower pneumonia is caused by different organism the interstitial pneumonia is caused by some different organisms so uh, depending on that the treatment also varies that's why it is very important to know which type of pneumonia the patient is suffering from and if the uh, examiner wants you to uh, wants you to differentiate between uh, whether the patient is the lower pneumonia patient or the interstitial pneumonia patient then he or she will must mention the x-ray finding in his or her question now uh, first of all the definition of the pneumonia so the definition of pneumonia is that it is the infection of the lung parenchyma so as i have mentioned there are two types of pneumonia one is the lower and the other one is the interstitial pneumonia how can you differentiate between them two so lower pneumonia uh, is associated with productive cough while uh, there will be consolidation in lung in the uh, x-ray in the chest x-ray there will be consolidation of the lung seen whereas uh, the interstitial pneumonia is uh, associated with non-productive cough plus there will be patchy reticular reticulonodular opacities in the chest x-ray that will help you diagnose uh, or the differentiate with, uh, whether the patient is suffering from lower of the interstitial pneumonia in the question other than that the uh, examiner may also mention about the ground glass opacity on the ct scan chest uh, again that also indicates towards the interstitial pneumonia in the patient so the next question they will ask you is the is about what are the positive organisms for this type of pneumonia so suppose you have diagnosed the case as the lower pneumonia then you have to write these all organisms and you if you have diagnosed it as the case of interstitial pneumonia you have to mention these all but uh, uh, it's a good thing that they do not ask about the interstitial pneumonia even they uh, generally do not ask about pneumonia now they even if they ask then they will be asking about this lower pneumonia not about this interstitial pneumonia okay so uh, that's a plus point for uh, all of us that they will be asking about lower pneumonia not about the interstitial pneumonia but for the knowledge point of view you should uh, remember the differences between the two uh, because the examiner's mind may turn anytime uh, by any uh, degree so maybe uh, the mind or mindset of the examiner has turned 180 degree and he may ask you about this interstitial pneumonia as well so uh, you should be prepared for that also that's why i have mentioned here so uh, if the diagnosis is interstitial pneumonia you have to answer this all and uh, if the diagnosis is lower, lower pneumonia then you have to answer the causative organisms as the streptococcus pneumonia the haemophilus influenzae the staphylococcus aureus and some of the gram negative bacilli and some of the gram negative bacilli like the pseudomonas Klebsiella e coli and the seracia marcescens so these are some of the 
uh, organisms which causes the pneumonia so uh, in the chapter of pneumonia what we are going to see uh, we will talk about these two bacteria only that is streptococcus pneumoniae and the haemophilus influenzae we have uh, i have talked about this uh, staphylococcus aureus in a separate uh, lecture uh, in the playlist there is a separate lecture for the staphylococcus aureus in the skin and subcutaneous infection playlist so you can go and watch about this staphylococcus aureus bacteria and about the staphylococcus pneumoniae and the haemophilus influenzae i will talk here in this video so first of all we will and uh, you just remember the name of these bacteria these are not so important uh, uh, from exam point of view but uh, you should remember the names of them because you have to write the names of bacteria no? in the causative organisms so you should remember this now coming to the bacteria proper we'll talk about the pneumococcal pneumonia first then in the separate video we'll talk about the uh, haemophilus influenzae pneumonia okay so this pneumococcal pneumonia is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae that is the most common other than that uh, yeah this is the most common streptococcus pneumoniae is most common and this belongs to the alpha hemolytic streptococci family okay alpha hemolytic streptococci family and in that alpha hemolytic streptococci there is also viridens streptococci so you should remember the difference between this streptococcus pneumoniae and the viridens streptococci uh, okay so i will make different video for that uh, very short video for the difference how to remember the difference between the uh, streptococcus pneumoniae and the viridens streptococci with the pneumonia now coming to the virulence factor of the streptococcus pneumoniae so there are different uh, virulence factors of this streptococcus pneumoniae those virulence factors are the capsular polysaccharide it has a capsular polysaccharide which protects it from phagocytosis it has got some c carbohydrate antigens it has got uh, the pneumolysin which is the membrane lysing toxin and it has got autolysin this autolysin has got some very specific properties with it okay this autolysin is a amidase enzyme please remember this that the autolysin is a amidase and then amidase and then this may be asking mcq plus this autolysin is responsible for two things that it causes autolysis of its own cells okay that is number one thing and number two thing is that it is responsible for the bile solubility of the toxin if there would not have been this uh, autolysin toxin then the bile solubility would not have been possible in absence of this autolysis plus uh, this autolysin toxin is also responsible for the Drotsman sepid or the carom point sepid colony so these two are the very important properties uh, with the streptococcus pneumonia and which are due to the autolysin toxin okay which has an activity of amides enzyme so please remember this autolysin that is a very important toxin we have from the streptococcus pneumonia now uh, uh, coming to the lab diagnosis of that streptococcus pneumonia so in the lab diagnosis we have to first collect the specimen so uh, since it is a respiratory infection so we will be collecting the sputum specimen plus pleural fluid can also be collected because uh, there may be pleuritis as well by that is to focus pneumonia so that's why uh, if there is development of the pleural effusion plus uh, impyema in the pleura that means we can collect the pleural fluid as also and send to the microbiology lab okay so there are two specimen depending on, on the presentation of the patient uh, we can collect the sputum we can collect the pleural fluid then we do the direct microscopy so in the direct microscopy the slide is prepared and it is gram stain and under microscopy we can see that there are gram positive cocci there are gram positive cocci in pairs and they are surrounded by a clear halo this complete statement is very important you should remember it as a whole okay so how does that stratococcus pneumonia appear under the microscope 
so it appears as a gram positive cocci in pairs surrounded by clear halo surrounded by clear halo okay so that is the uh, uh, finding of the direct microscopy when we do the culture then in the culture uh, we reach we reach uh, i mean we need the enriched media for the streptococcus pneumoniae because again a streptococcus pneumoniae is also a fastidious organism that means ye bhi ek khun chusne wala bacteria hi hai jisko bhi khun chahiye that means we need some enriched media those enriched media are the blood agar and chocolate agar both of which have blood now in the blood agar there is alpha hemolysis and we know that whenever there is alpha hemolysis there is production of green zone plus the characteristic shape of the colonies are also seen which give us a hint about this bacteria that is it draws a separate or the caramel point colonies okay and when we see the growth on the chocolate agar then we see the uh, bleaching effect okay we see the bleaching effect with greenish hue around the around that glazed area over the chocolate agar so these are the findings over the uh, on culturing the streptococcus pneumoniae now we have the culture smear when we do the culture smear then in the culture smear smear is produced from the colonies and gram stain uh, and after gram staining we see that there is lanceolate or flame separate gram positive cocci okay there is lanceolate separate or flame separate gram positive cocci they are arranged in pairs okay that is an important point that they are arranged in pairs but uh, yes they are lanceolate separate and flame separate lanceolate and flame separate gram positive cocci now coming to the identification point so identification can be done by the biochemical test we have the bile solubility testing in which it is found to be soluble we have optochin sensitivity in which it is sensitive and inulin fermentation which is positive okay and this all findings are opposed in case of viridens streptococci like viridens streptococci are not soluble in by they are resistant to optogen and they are not fermenting the inulin so these three points are also the point of difference between the streptococcus pneumoniae and the streptococcus viridens now coming to the antigen detection so we can detect it by the uh, detection of the antigen of streptococcus uh, pneumoniae as well so we can choose to detect the capsular antigen or the c carbohydrate antigen of the bacteria that can be done by latex agglutination test and the immunochromatographic test other than that we have um, uh, last but not the least is the molecular method so that is the real time pcr can be used or the biofire film array can be used for diagnosis of the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria plus we can also do the antimicrobial susceptibility testing to find the uh best you know antibiotic for that person which can be helpful in curing that person so these are all the points uh, i would use about which you have to mention if there is a question about the lower pneumonia remember whenever they ask you about uh, the pneumonia and ask you about the lab diagnosis of the pneumonia you have to write the lab diagnosis of the most common organism which is causing that pneumonia like if they ask you about lower pneumonia then the most common organism causing the lower pneumonia is the streptococcus pneumonia although the hemophilus influenza streptococcus aureus can also cause that but you have to write specifically or more uh, about the streptococcus pneumonia because that is the most common cause of the lower pneumonia yeah so uh, that that that's all about this uh, discussion of the pneumococcal pneumonia next we'll talk about the hemophilus influenza in separate uh, video so that's all for this pneumonia lecture